I think people don't buy into any of these ideologies. I don't think people buy into that MTV video. I think it's just contrived and it makes it seem like everyone thinks it's true when it's on television because it's a magic box illuminated in front of you. Sure. And the government is saying that cops inherently are racist and want to kill everybody. Again, mindlessly applying it to a group, setting the standard that the media is God. Just like Obama says, I'm going to Alaska, I'm going to change the name of a, of a mountain. Since when can the president do that? Since when does the first lady tell us what our kids eat at school? And I bet that guy that killed the cop is going to have something to say about it. Oh, you know, well, Black Lives Matter. Remember that one guy that was tried for, like, raping a woman or whatever? And he's like, Black Lives Matter. Well, another guy killed the two white kids and then said the same thing. It's, it's totally insane. It, may, it means nothing. But they think that they have people on their side with that when in reality well, they Well, it's don't. like the Klan getting filled with the same rhetoric but just against another group would think, well, this is a black guy, so I had to lynch him. Yeah. It's, it's also black. You know, I mean, it's white cop. I had to shoot him. It's artificial racism. It's not even there. It's, there's not even real racism right now. It's all artificial in the sense there's obviously real racism, but the, the race war artificial mindset of Black Lives Matter and all that is contrived. Well, that's coming up, and they've got the clips of the latest pigs in a blanket. Fry them up. Pigs with wings. They've got it all. Jakari Jackson and Joe Beggs are going to be breaking it down. And they have a police officer coming on. He's running for sheriff, uh, who, a former Marine. He's been endorsed by a lot of patriots. Uh, this guy could be the next uh, David Clark, and he's going to be joining us coming up in about 30 minutes, so stay with us. And welcome back to the fourth hour of the Alex Jones Show. Myself, Jakari Jackson, Joe Biggs, here riding shotgun. Alex is bringing back the fourth hour, so this is a great way to inform you, to inform uh, your local stations. If they don't care, you may give them a call, say, hey, you guys may want to pick this up and find out what's going on over at Infowars.com. Now, coming up a little bit, into the hour about the 2.30 mark for us. We're going to have Sheriff Candidate Carl Pittman. He's running for sheriff in Harris County that's down in the Houston area. So, of course, we're going to talk to him about this recent shooting, how he reacted to that, and also some of the other things that are going on in other departments that we see around the country, whether that's around in Ferguson or up in Washington with uh, some of these other shenanigans going on. So we'll talk about all that. And also one of the things that we want to talk about before we go too much further is the InfoWars money bomb that's coming up it's coming up very soon, uh, the 16th, 17th. It's going to be a 24-hour, or excuse me, 27-hour broadcast. I'm going to be on, of course, Joe Biggs. I'm really interested to see what Joe Biggs is going to say because uh, he, he, he does a lot of uh, kind of co-hosting. But uh, when you get into that host chair, Joe, what do you think you're going to be talking about? Well, I'm going to try to get some uh, exciting guests on. You know, I've got three hours to cover, and it's going to be during uh, the the peak hours of midnight to 3 a.m. So it should be interesting. Those are always the interesting hours. You yeah, know, we're going to get some. I'm sure we're going to get some very interesting callers coming in with some uh, highly entertaining topics to discuss. So. Yeah, that that midnight to three, or I guess pretty much uh, that midnight to around five or six, you get very interesting callers. I mean, on anything, if you have a local radio station, and those are always the people who come in and have very uh, interesting things to say. Yeah, exactly. So it, it will be fun. And like I said, we're trying to raise a million dollars so we can reach 400 million and essentially help widen this broadcast so we can reach more people, get more people awake so they can find out what's going on. And it's amazing the amount of people we're already reaching at this point in time. Just imagine the 400 million people getting informed on a daily basis about what's going on in the world. Truly not the lies that the mainstream media is telling you. And it's very exciting because we've seen a lot of growth on Twitter, on uh, Facebook, on YouTube. The Alex Jones channel is growing, and we definitely encourage you to subscribe to that. But enough of all, all that. Joe, let's talk about some of the issues that are going on. I know we were talking a little bit off camera about some gun issues. And we have this article that's on Infowars.com. It's one of the uh, top articles. New York Times Barrow. Massive gun grab, the only way to impact violent crime. So, you know, Joe, as much as these people, these gun grabbers say that we don't want to take your guns, they're saying right here, we want to take your guns. Just like you weren't there, but it was before you worked here. We went out to the Alamo and Alex gave that speech. And they said, nobody's trying to take your guns while simultaneously handing you a flyer saying, let's ban assault weapons. Right. <laughs> it's like, we don't want to take your guns. Like it says here on this paper that you want to take our guns away. Well, the interesting thing about it is the growth of social media. The fact that people are so informed quickly now about what's going on versus how it used to be before, you know, Twitter, Facebook, all that. So it seems like there's a lot more gun violence going on when at the, in actuality, a lot of the stuff's pretty much the same. It's just that now everyone's got a camera with a, mm -hmm. or a phone with a camera in it. Everyone can upload to Twitter really quick, Instagram, whatever it may be, and get something out that normally people wouldn't even hear about or it'd be covered in the news. But because social media is so strong, these 
outlets are being forced uh, forced to cover these different shooting scenarios and things like that. And of course, you're going to have people out there like Virginia try to use an incredibly horrible situation that happened and hijack it to use it to push gun control. Yes, because just that point you brought up, what used to be a local news story can easily become a national, if not international news story overnight. And it's very unfortunate these incidents happen. But when you have a, a situation like, a, I think it was back in 2012, a 12-year-old Oklahoma girl, somebody broke into her home. She was home alone. She shot the guy. That wasn't, you know, international news that a young lady used a firearm to defend herself or any of these other situations. And I know you know this very well with this recent shooting at the recruiting offices. You know, yes, that did get a lot of media attention, but they quickly dropped it because they didn't want to talk about that this uh, building full of highly trained men weren't able to protect themselves in the gun-free zone sign on the door didn't stop a single bullet that I'm aware of. Yeah, and then you have the, the Department of the Army coming out releasing statements saying that it's a security threat for patriots, for people to go out there and stand guard because they feel it's their, their obligation as an American citizen to go out and help protect the ones that aren't able to protect themselves. It's just like if you're driving down the road and you see someone being beat, you're going to pull over and help that person. And it's so ridiculous, Joe, when we're talking about the people who can't protect themselves. These are our military men exactly. and women. Exactly. They shouldn't be a soft target. It, Why are we making them that? It blows my mind. And when we went out there, you spent more time than I did, but we went out there and people's wives would come up to us. You know, hey, my, right. my husband can't come out here and say anything to you officially, but I just want to say I, I really appreciate it. They were trying to buy us donuts and pizzas and wanted to take us out, you know, wherever to the steakhouse. Yeah. But, you know, it's interesting. There's a, another article up right now, actually, uh, by Steve Watson at Infowars.com. Poll, 60% of Americans against more gun control. More than two-thirds say shootings are a mental problem. And that's one of the big issues is the fact that there is a mental problem going on. That You have these doctors who push these psychotropic drugs, and they don't ever have to, to be responsible for those actions of those drugs, the adverse reactions. I used to have to take that stuff when I was in the military. It made me suicidal. It made me crazy out of my mind. And the day that I flushed that stuff down the toilet, I never once acted out again. I never once got crazy. That stuff is bad. And that's what we need to stop. We need to stop worrying about banning guns. We need to start getting to the root of problems and getting rid of these drugs that really make people go mental. And yeah, because everybody says, well, you know, you all these guns, people kill each other. I mean... King Leonidas and his 300s, as we all know, they use rocket launchers and AK-47s. No, they went out there with swords and spears, and they killed people. Slingshots. I mean, yeah, it's, whatever works. It's Banning the gun is not going to eliminate the problem. I just saw this article today. I can't recall if it was on Drudge or not, but it was about a woman who drowned two of her kids in a bathtub, and like the third one escaped and got away. Are you going to ban the bathtub now? Of course not. You understand that this was an incident of a mentally ill person. I don't know if she was on drugs or not but a mentally ill person who used whatever was in her means to commit her offense. I mean, yeah, I mean, just, just imagine a world where there are no guns. Back in biblical times, when there wasn't anything like that, Cain and Abel, yeah. use a rock. rock. I mean, yeah. someone's going to find someone. Someone has ill intention. Someone has hate in their heart, and they really want to cross that line from sanity to just going, you know, back crazy mm -hmm. and doing something. They'll do it. If there's no gun, they're going to, I mean, you could literally, I could use this microphone and just bludgeon someone with it. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we're, are we, will we ban microphones after and that? And we had the, the article, I think it was a couple of years ago, that blunt objects like hammers and baseball bats were killing record numbers of people. FBI's own number, you're more likely to be stabbed to death than shot with a real assault rifle, you know, at least in this country. Yeah, I, I, I just don't get people's logic when it comes to that. People, when, when, when one of these tragedies happens, people start thinking with their emotions. They're not using facts. They're not sitting back and going, all right, how is this going to affect us as a country if we really do try to ban guns? Now you're taking someone's right to protect themselves or property and their family away from them because of a few bad people out there who've made bad decisions. And, and the bad people up. aren't going to give up their guns. No, exactly. That's why they are criminals by definition. <laughs> yeah, and anybody says, they say, they point out someplace like the UK, well, we took the guns away. Well, UK also has higher numbers of uh, muggings, home invasions, all this other stuff. Just because these offenses aren't being committed at the same numbers with firearms, these crimes are still happening. And the flip side of that, you look at some place like Mexico, where it has very low civilian gun ownership, but the cartels obviously didn't get that memo. They're riding around with guns, you know, hanging journalists from flagpoles and doing all types of crazy things. Yeah, criminals love gun control. And that's all that's going to do is give them an edge in the game. Yeah. You're going to give them that upper hand that they need to continue to go out and do stuff. Because if, if I'm a criminal and I'm sitting down in my car driving through and I'm going to, you know, do a home invasion... 
if I know everyone on this block doesn't have a gun, I'm going to feel pretty good. My odds are pretty good. Yeah. This guy might have a baseball bat. I might have to do a couple ducking and dodging. But at the end of the day, if I can dodge that first swing, I can, you know, put around in. So that's how they're going to think. I need to be, I want to know that when I'm at home and I hear something bang or knock over and the door open up, I can go out there, have my firearm, and be responsible. I don't have to shoot the guy, but I can at least show that gun and make that guy rethink his decision about coming into my home and turn away. Yeah, and that's what a lot of times that people forget. It is a deterrent. You don't always have to shoot the guy because they go out and they watch James Bond shoot somebody 300 yards away with a little PPK. I mean, it doesn't really work like that in real life. You know, you can just pull a gun out on somebody who's entering your home and they say, whoa, it's really not that serious anymore. Yeah, they're going to rethink their life decisions at that point in time. They're going to find God really quick and they're going to get out of there. Yeah. And they're going to hopefully make the right decision to never do that again because they've been given a second chance. You know, everyone thinks that if you have this gun, you're going to automatically just be pulling the trigger. I have a gun with me all the time, and I don't have any desire to wave it around, do anything. It's there purely for my protection. Mm -hmm. And if I were to see something happen, like an active shooter situation, and I was there and I had my concealed, I can help the situation out. Because when seconds count, some police officers aren't going to be able to be there until after it's too late, and then there's a body count. Yeah, and that's it, not knocking the police. No. That's just saying they can't be everywhere every place at every time. And what you're talking about, uh, people with these firearms, uh, one of the big uh, arguments against open carry is that if it's legal, everybody's going to do it. Well, my home state of Oklahoma passed it back in 2013, I believe is when it came law, became law. And when I go home, you know, Christmas or, you know, summertime, I went here in May, I've seen since it passed in 2013, two people open carry who weren't police officers. It's not some big deal. You know, if you want to, I'm glad you have that right to do so. But it's not the thing that everybody's going to run out and do it. Yeah, I mean, I have the ability to open carry all over the place, but I mean, I'm, I don't do it. I use good judgment. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we, we do a lot of open carry marches, you and I, and a lot of the, the people around here in Texas. And it, it, it's more for opening dialogue with people, people who don't quite understand anything about guns. We can use that as a platform. We go out there and we, we, we walk around and we use good judgment. You know, we don't have our hands on the trigger. Mm -hmm. It's at the low ready, pointed down. We're not having it up in the air, the muzzle flashing around. You know, we're trying to do the right thing. We engage in conversation and speak to people about the Second Amendment. And at the end of the day, we usually open up a lot of eyes and inform a lot of people on subjects like yeah, that. Yeah, because I guess there's a lot of uh, stigma from people who haven't actually been to one of these rallies or actually seen it in their city. So, you know, somebody in, you know, L.A. or whatever who's never encountered something like this, they think it's, you know, people running in fear for their lives. I mean, I've been to conservative number 20 open carry rallies. I've never seen anybody run in fear for their life. There's some people who may cross the street, but nobody runs up and like, ah, and like you know, the world's about yeah. to end. None of that's going on. So when we come back, uh, not this break, but the next break, we'll have uh, the sheriff, Carl Pittman. Carl Pittman, or the sheriff candidate. So stay tuned for this and so much more coming up on the Alex Jones Show. I'm Jakari Jackson sitting here with Joe Biggs. I want to give a real quick plug for Super Mail. Now, this is a product that I personally use on a daily basis. So it's really done a lot for me. I remember the first day I actually took it, I didn't really know what to expect. I was like, eh, we'll see what happens. You know, I, I don't really ever, I never really took supplements much. But let me tell you, this stuff is phenomenal. When I took it, I mean, immediately the energy set in and... As far as libido goes, I was definitely impressed with that. And let's just say the uh, the old lady at the house was very pleased with Super Male Vitality just as much as I was. So I definitely say it's something worth uh, sinking your dollars in. It uh, definitely helps support the operation. And it gives you and I the ability to go out and do these trips, cover these different uh, uh yeah, these Stories. different events because, you know, as many trips that we go on, especially you, Joe, <laughs> uh, there's many we don't get to cover. And people ask, like, why didn't you guys cover this? Why didn't you cover that? You know, we go as time and finances allow. And when you go and you purchase something like Super Male Vitality or you get the hats, the DVDs, anything else at the InfoWars shop, it funds our operation. It allows us to go on these trips. So if you like what you see on air and you like to, you know, to come to your city, you know, buy a bottle of Super Mail and maybe put in a little tagline, a comment line. Hey, can you guys come out to my city and cover this or that topic? It's funny because every time I go out on these trips now, when people automatically, when they come up to me, it's not just like, hey, Joe Biggs or whatever like that. It's like, hey, man, look at this. And they, they pull out of their pocket. You'll see like the ladies will pull this out of their purse or the guys out of their pockets. And like, hey, man, I just wanted to show you that, you know, we, we support what you're doing. We're using this. It's, it's tremendously helped us in many ways, you know, with, you know, 
the family in general. You know, when I landed in uh, in Georgia,